good evening to everyone i welcome all of you to the 59th lecture in the lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the department of nonlinear dynamics bharti dasan university with the support from rusa 2.0 today we have a speaker from university of british columbia vancouver canada i don't need to introduce professor bulman's name to the people who are working in the field of symmetry analysis of differential equations or working in integrable systems Professor Bulman is one of the pioneers who had exposed the usefulness of least symmetry analysis in finding solutions of ordinary and partial differential equations. His book entitled Similarity Methods for Differential Equations, published by Springer Vella, is one of the guidebooks to enter into this field and carry out research in this particular topic. I can proudly say our department has started using this book for research, even from the early 80s. his achievements are very large and in view of students i read out his cv in a very brief manner right now he is retired and working as a professor emeritus at university of british columbia vancouver canada he has written a large number of articles and many of them are thought provoking papers he has written six book and six books and translated a book from russia in my view his book entitled problem book for first year calculus was very interesting and useful for college students as well professor bulman has made several distinctions and won several awards he won bams education prize adrian poltier prize and faculty of science service award he is a fellow of canadian mathematical society as well he had served as an editorial board member in several international journals and supervised several graduate students he has been invited speaker to numerous international conferences and presented conference talks and seminar presentations he was also very much active in outreach activities from 1969 to 2013 that is about 40 years he used to, to meet high school students in canada regularly through workshops and motivate them which is a great contribution to society in my view apart from this he has given several radio talks actively participated in various students program he has acted as chair co organizer and member in several committees as well my contact with professor bluman started in early 90s itself i used to request his reprints by post and he used to send his papers whenever the request has been made after completing my phd i visited his department for 3 months and worked with him in fact i attended one of his courses completely during that period in that sense i can say he is one of my teachers i was initially hesitating to invite him to give a lecture in this series this is mainly because the time difference between india and vancouver it is almost 12 hours and it is difficult to find a suitable convenient time for both of us surprisingly when i write to him he immediately accepted my invitation and suggested me that he is ready to start his lecture at 7 am yes now the vancouver time is 7 am in the morning and he is ready already in front of us with this short introduction now i invite professor bluman to deliver his lecture over to you professor thank thank you very much and thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction and it's my pleasure to speak in your A, a series which is a very good idea um so i'm going to be talking as i mentioned in introduction to similarity methods for partial differential equations and similarity and symmetry are used interchangeably here um now uh so i'll be i'll be scanning over a work which will cover a period of what 100 and over 140 years now uh, the the aim in in this is to for a given for, for this partial differential equations the aim is for a given system of partial differential equations to systematically find solutions conservation laws and mapping to a simpler pde system uh, and when this is possible most systematic methods are symmetry based directly or through extensions and in general a symmetry of a of a system of partial differential equations is is it is transforming its solutions to other solutions and hence in principle as as in terms of a thought experiment every system of partial differential equations has symmetries and we'll be focusing on continuous symmetries so you can look upon a, a continuous symmetry as a 
as a continuous def as a deformation, continuous deformation of solutions to other solutions. So it's really a topological definition. But um, but the I, the problem is you have to know what do you do with the symmetries? How, how can you find them? And how to efficiently calculate the symmetries and conservation laws? And um, and, we, and we, of course we have to have a coordinate system to work in. That, that, and the question is how do what coordinate systems can we have that move solutions to other solutions continuously? By the way, please feel free to ask questions at any time. So I'm going to give an outline of what I'm going to be talking about. First of all, we'll present Lee's work uh, over 140 years ago, his work on invariance of partial differential equations, Lee or point symmetries, infinitesimals, the, his mapping of solutions to solutions, and similarity or invariant solutions. And then I'll, I'll have a brief discussion of the work of the American engineering scientist Buckingham, who uh, who uh, introduced in a, in a nice scientific way dimensional analysis. And then the work of Emmy Neuter on, on finding local conservation laws for variational systems. And then I'll discuss the non-classical method, which extends the, the work of Lee in finding invariant solutions to find solutions of PDEs, a little bit on higher order symmetries about the things behind mappings, uh, how to systematically uh, find the local conservation laws for any system of PDEs. Variational systems are 0% of all the kinds of systems that you could have, by the way. Uh, systematic extension of similarity methods to non-locally related systems through admitted conservation laws. We'll look at an example of the planar gas dynamics equations. And, uh, and, and then we'll talk about more recent work on the systematic extension of similarity methods to non-locally related systems through admitted point symmetries. So Lee, in the 1880s, introduced the notion of invariance of a PDE under continuous groups or one parameter Lee groups. And he used this notion to find special solutions, which are called invariant solutions, similarity solutions, or auto model solutions. The auto model is a word used in the, often in the Russians, had been used in the early days in the Russian literature. And Lee gave an algorithm to find the point, or more generally the contact symmetries, from solving a related linear systems for infinitesimal generators, which are restricted to act one to one on the space of independent and dependent variables and their first partial derivatives. Uh, point symmetry yields a one parameter family of solutions from a known solution. Although Lee never gave a formula for finding such a solution, I'll present you a formula for that. Now, a, a one parameter, a parameter will be labeled epsilon, Lie group of point transformations acting on a space of two independent variables, x and t, and a dependent variable u uh, is of the form shown here, where you, where you have, uh, in, you, you can formulate it in terms of an infinitesimal generator, which is an operator involving the infinitesimals of the transformation, c, tau, and eta. But here things are essentially exact. Uh, the infinitesimals contains all the information, and that's the key point in here. Now, I'm going to be most, mostly focusing on, on uh, two independent variables and one dependent variable. But this extends to any number of independent variables and any number of dependent variables. Now, the. So the, the one way of, of getting the group from its infinitesimal generators, as, as in, on the previous slide, was through exponentiation of, of the infinitesimal generator. But another way that we can find it from, what, from Lee's work can also be found from its infinitesimal generator by solving the corresponding in initial value problem for an autonomous system of first order ordinary differential equations. And in here, you have u, u star would be u x stars x, t stars t, when epsilon equals zero. So from these infinitesimals, if we integrate out the system, we will have the group. And the group, what Lee showed is that the group naturally extends to action on derivatives. 
and there's a, 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 a standard formula obtained for the infinitesimal for the change in, let's say, the partial derivative of u with respect to x in terms of the infinitesimals in c, tau, and eta. And you, and you get an extended generator, and the group naturally extends to a one-parameter group of transformations acting on the space of independent variables, dependent variables, and their first derivatives. And you can go on and on to higher derivatives. So consequently, as a consequence of this, one can find the, the set of infinitesimal generators for a, for a given PDE. And a one-parameter Lee group of point transformations leaving invariant at PDE is called a point symmetry or Lee symmetry of the PDE. So as an example, I'm going to consider the, the heat equation, um, uxx is ut. A point symmetry leaves invariant the, as I, the, the x infinity that I have sh showing on this slide you can, it's just meaning that you can extend the generator on and on to any number of derivatives. It, it becomes what I called X when it acts on the independent variables and, and the dependent variables. It's X1 when it acts on the, on the first, up to the first derivatives, et cetera. So a point symmetry leaves invariant the heat equation if and only if uh, its generator, exponential generator or the group uh, is, uh, acting on the equation gives you zero when u satisfies the equation. And that reduces to the, from Lee's work, it reduces to the infinitesimals for the second order derivative of x minus the, the first order derivative, uh, in, infinitesimal for the first derivative with respect to t. And that's equal to zero when u satisfies the equation. And then one can show that for the heat equation, uh, the infinitesimal c does not depend on u. It only depends on the independent variables x and t here. And the infinitesimal tau depends only on, on the variable t. And being a linear equation, it means that the infinitesimal uh, for u, which I called eta, is linear in u. And, and then you get a system of uh, uh, determining equations for the symmetries reduces to the equations three equations listed below for, for the tau, f, and the c. And then the g is an infinite parameter group arising because the, the, the PDE is, is linear. Uh, this group actually plays a very important role in mapping problems, this, this so-called trivial group. So then one can show that the, for the uh, outside of that infinite parameter group, being a linear equation, the heat equation has the non-trivial six-parameter Lie group of transformations with these generators, of which uh, four could be seen by inspection, which is the translation in X that's represented by X1, X2 is the trans invariance under translations in T, and uh, X3 represents the scaling in X and T, uh, and then X6 is the scaling in U being a linear homogeneous equation, but the other two are not obvious. X5 is a Galilean transformation, and X4 is a projective type of transformation. Okay, now let's see what we can do here. Before I go on to that, I want to talk about a mapping of a solution into one parameter family of solutions. Now, this formula was not given by Lee. So under a symmetry group, any solution, u equals theta of x and t of the heat equation, if not invariant, that means it does not go into itself, maps into the one parameter family of solutions, which I'll label u as a phi of x, t, epsilon, which satisfies the functional equation indicated here. The u itself in that equation is phi of x, t, and epsilon. That is a very complicated looking functional equation. A similarity or invariant solution, u equals theta of x and t, maps into itself and, and hence, it satisfies that the u on the left side of that equation, phi, that is the phi of x, t, and epsilon, is the state of x and t itself. And then one can show that this holds if and only if u equals theta of x and t satisfies the invariant surface condition. See, the important thing is with Lie groups, everything goes down to infinitesimal generators. They, they contain all the information. That's what's behind this. So therefore, you get... A, 
a uh, invariant surface condition expressed in terms of the infinitesimals. In general, that would be C U X tau U T equals uh, uh, the the eta over here. And, and so when we look at these equations here, we have a characteristic equations that arise for this first order uh, uh, linear PDE. Uh, and, and these are the characteristic equations associated with. If we solve the first equation here, we'll get the similarity variable zeta of x and t equals a constant. And then when you substitute this expression uh, into one of these uh, equations, one of tau or, or c, and then you integrate out the uh, remaining equation, you will get the similarity form u, which is a function of zeta g of x and t, where g of x and t is a known specific function of x and t, and f of zeta is an arbitrary function of zeta. But most importantly, the substitution of this expression one into the heat equation is guaranteed except for some uh, funny things that could happen, but never happens in practice, to yield a reduced ODE satisfied by F of zeta. Now let's take the most non-trivial of the generators, consider the point symmetry of the heat equation corresponding to this projective transformation. If we solve these characteristic equations, uh, we, when epsilon equals zero, when you solve that system of first order ODEs, it's easy to find the solution is that x star is x over one minus epsilon t, t star is t over one minus epsilon t, and u star is equal to this expression right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is say, remember I, I, I showed a formula earlier uh, over here, this formula right over here uh, for, for finding the, the uh, right, this formula, sorry, this formula over here, the functional equation uh, that the, the solution maps into, the one parameter family of solutions. So if you take that formula and apply it to this situation, uh, what you would find is that the group of transformations two, this projective transformations, many maps any solution which is not invariant, as u equals theta of x and t, into the one parameter family of solutions, exhibited here, this is not obvious at all, that this is a, that this is a one parameter family of solutions of the heat equation, but you can check that it is, of course. Now, how about the invariant solutions arising from the projective transformation? So these would satisfy this invariant surface condition, the characteristic uh, PDE. And then when we solve the, the solution of the first equation here, use the similarity variable zeta, which is x upon t, which is a constant, and then substituting this expression into the other, another, uh, either this equation or this equality, it's the same thing, you obtain the similarity form, u is one upon root t, e to the exponential minus x squared upon four t times f of zeta. And now, if you substitute f of zeta into the heat, if you substitute this expression into the heat equation, then f of zeta would, would solve a reduced ODE and it's, F simple one, F double prime is zero. And this leads to the similarity solutions, uh, specific solutions, these are invariant solutions with two constants C1 and C2. And you see that when C2 equals zero, we basically have gotten the fundamental solution to the heat equation. Now, the American uh, engineering scientist Buckingham wrote a, a remarkable a series of three papers in 1914 and 15. They were written in Physical Review, Nature, and uh, it's Transactions of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And uh, the most interesting actually is the one in the Transactions of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, because it has discussion in the paper. In fact, this led to the development of the, un the undergraduate program, Engineering Science, very popular in North America. Anyhow, Buckingham introduced a systematic procedure to make every real equation dimensionless and the subject under dimensional analysis. But what we're interested in is the consequence of this for a partial differential equation. 
So consequently, as a consequence of this, a boundary value problem for a PDE might be reduced to a boundary value problem with fewer independent variables. Now, how does that relate to what I'm talking about? Well, one can show, because the dimensional analysis involves the constants and the variables. Now, when we reduce the number of variables, uh, we're not interested in the, the constants don't enter into the picture, but one can show uh, through various theorems that the reduced solutions resulting from dimensional analysis will arise as similarity solutions from invariance under the scalings of the independent and dependent variables only. But most interesting is the converse. If you ask me some questions, I can talk about the converse. I try to discuss that in, in one or two of my books. Okay. Now, the, the uh, Emmy Neuter, uh, who, who fled to the United States in the 1930s, uh, in 1918 wrote a brilliant paper. He showed that if a PDE system has a variational principle, then any least symmetry leaving invariant the action integral for its Lagrangian density, which, we, which is nowadays called a variational symmetry, yields a conservation law. And the converse holds. That is, there is a direct correspondence between conservation laws and variational symmetries of the action functional. This is quite remarkable that Neuter was with, within with Hilbert's group and every, he made everyone work on PDEs because Emmy Neuter was a pure algebraist actually. As well, and her father was also a very well-known mathematician. Now, what one can show is that a variational symmetry must be a Lie symmetry of the system of PDEs, but the converse is false. That is, there are Lie symmetries that are not variational symmetries and do not yield conservation laws. Now, we have some, now we're gonna talk about, the rest of this talk about extensions, these works going back to, uh, uh, before around the, the time of the First World War. Um, so that, first of all, we'll talk about the extension of these methods, which I'll call the classical method, to the non-classical method to find solutions of PDE. So first of all, let's say we're given a second uh, PDE indicated. And these methods to find solutions involve finding an infinitesimal generator as indicated, so that the extended operator operating on the equation when the equation is satisfied is zero. That is, we have invariance, and it's important to make the point here, we have invariance for every single solution of the PDE. The resulting linear system of determining equations yields the C, tau, and eta holding for every solution of the PDE. And then we seek classical invariant solutions which satisfy the invariant surface condition and the PDE itself. Now, let's look upon this. We're trying to find solutions. We're not interested in, in uh, all the solutions of the PDE being involved. We're trying to find solutions. So now, they, if you think about it, all, what we want to do is find a method which has the property that it leaves invariant a, sub, a subspace of the solutions. It leaves invariant, but the rest, they can, go, they can be mapped into other PDEs. And so that's where the non-classical method is an example of. It's, but it's an example that's practical. That's the important thing. So I introduced this idea in my thesis in 1967, sounds a little bit, long, but quite a long time ago. And it, it was used to find solutions. Here it involves finding an infinitesimal generator so that the extended operator is zero. But now we are saying it has to, it's a solution of the PDE, but also a solution of the invariant service condition itself. So that means that it's not, that not every solution is covered here. It's just a subset of solutions of the PDE. So that's, that's I want to emphasize, invariance for only solutions that satisfy the system uh, uh, which involves the PDE and the invariant surface condition. And hence, if you study this carefully, you'll see that without loss of generality, there are two cases when tau is zero or tau is one. Or you could have C is zero and C is one, same thing. The resulting nonlinear system of determining equations, so the resulting system of determining equations, which is linear in the case of the least classical solutions, now becomes nonlinear. And this yields uh, the C and eta holding for particular solutions of the PDE, not that we're not res we're restricting to the solution we're trying to find. And assuming that case tau equals one, one then seeks 
For each such set, C eta, non-classical solutions satisfying the expression indicated. Uh, at the end of the talk, I'll be, I'll be going over the over references, and I'll, 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 I'll discuss what was in those references. Now, the non-classical method yields all solutions of the form indicated here, where theta is some function of xt and, and a function of a zeta, which satisfies a reduced ODE. Now, Lee's classical method and the direct method due to Kruskal and Clarkson in 1989 are special cases of the non-classical method. What I mean is that, that the non-classical method will yield all solutions obtained by Lee's classical method and all solutions obtained by the direct method, and there are examples where more are obtained. So as mentioned before, many new solutions to nonlinear PDs have been found using the non-classical method and including uh, going beyond the direct method, which is more cumbersome to uh, use anyhow. Okay, uh, a former student of mine, Skiyuki Kumei from Japan, in the 1970s, he, ex he had extended Lee symmetries to higher order symmetries. Now, in actual fact, Neuter, in her famous paper in 1918, implicitly and uh, this mentioned infinitesimals depending on higher derivatives. Uh, and, uh, so she actually anticipated this in 1918. Now, a point symmetry, when I presented it to you, as I mentioned before, it would map a solution into another solution. But notice that in that uh, transformation, x is changing and t is changing as well as u. So it's not a straight up uh, uh, on, the x, on the domain. It's not a straight up from one solution to the other, but it's a slanting of them. But we can also make, get the same solution by going straight up, where the, the independent and dependent variables don't change, but the, this, you just, the solution is mapped into another solution. That's what's happening here. And here you get a, 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 a generator. Uh, to, the generator, to express this, replaces the eta by the, uh, the, by the invariant surface condition, essentially, not zero but we're replacing eta by eta minus cux minus tau ut. Okay, so in particular, one can find, one can extend this. So these are, so the infinitesimal generator for the point symmetry is, as you can see here, is linear in the first derivatives. But one can extend this now to uh, higher order symmetries. And I'll, I'm going to replace the eta in. I'm going to replace the eta in this expression. I'm going to call that whole thing eta now. And so now we can look for higher order symmetries where the the generator depends on u, the first partials of u, up to the nth order partials of u. And here the extension, of course, is very easy to calculate uh, because x and t uh, are don't tr are they transform into themselves. So this is obtained by solving u applied to u x x minus g. That is this, when when the u satisfies the equation, the PDE. And um, if eta is linear in the first partials, then we have a Lie point symmetry. And if eta depends at most on the uh, first order part, but not necessarily linearly, yes, we could call that a, that's called a Lie contact symmetry. By the way, these can only exist in the case of one dependent variable. For higher dependent variables, there are no Lie contact symmetries for a PDE. So here, invariant solutions u equals theta of x and t would satisfy eta is zero and u x x and the and the PDE being satisfied. Remember for the for the uh, point symmetry that eta was eta minus that that was the invariant surface condition. So that eta equals zero was formally the is the invariant surface condition expressed in another way. Now, if a PDE can be linearized by an inverse scattering transform, this would imply an infinite number of, uh, an infinite number, not infinity number, an infinite number of higher order symmetries. An example of that is the KDV equation, the quarter of egg degrees equation. Next, uh, uh, invertible mappings. Now, this was a, a thing that puzzled me for years and years. We there were, there were mappings of, of specific equations and other equations, but that in itself I, was not such an interesting question. More interesting was the question of, suppose I have a nonlinear system of PDEs. 
does there exist a mapping of that nonlinear system into a linear system of PDEs? And we have, there have been many, many examples. And how can we do that systematically? So, um, so, what, so, the, the, so there are two types of, of such problems. The critical thing is that the target class of PDEs can, can be completely characterized by its symmetry properties. And then, and it turns out that there are two classes, natural classes that have this property. One is nonlinear PD, uh, linear PDEs. And here, the, the characterization of the linear PDEs is that infinite parameter group that every solution, uh, every, every solution yields a symmetry, this uncountable number of symmetries of a particular type. That's the key. And in the, in the case of a, of a linear equation with constant coefficients, the critical thing is it's invariant under translations of its independent variables. And from that, one can determine, first of all, about the mapping of a nonlinear PDE to some linear PDE. I'm talking about invertible mappings here. And we can answer the, after calculating the symmetries of the nonlinear PDE, we can say yes or no, can it be mapped into some linear PDE? And secondly, we can find explicit mapping. Of course, you have to do the calculations for the mapping. We can set up the, 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 the equations to find the explicit mapping when, when the answer is yes. And similarly, for the mapping of a linear PDE with variable coefficients to a linear PDE with constant coefficients, if we calculate the symmetries, and by the way, you don't have to solve the determining equations. By looking at the determining equations, uh, for the equation with variable coefficients, we can answer yes or no uh, if it can be mapped into one with constant coefficients and also set up the, the formulas to find the mapping when, when the answer is yes. Um, yeah, I must admit it took a very long time, many years to figure out how to do this in a systematic way. Now, for example, let me just show an example. Let's take that system of uh, nonlinear uh, PDEs I indicate up here. And, it, and, it, and you can show that it admits this point symmetry where W of X and T satisfies the heat equation. Now, so basically a nonlinear, if you can map a nonlinear system to a linear system, what you have to have is that when you calculate its symmetries in some manner, the linear equation will fall out in the calc in calculating its symmetries. It, you see, it must have an infinite, uncountable infinite parameter group because you're gonna map it into a linear PD. It does, has, does have an uncountable infinite parameter group. So it has to have that kind of characteristic. But, not, but it's a lot more work than that, but that's the basic idea. So from, 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 from this point symmetry, one can then systematically get, get the formula, map, you can, can systematically find the formula that maps this this linear system into this nonlinear system into a linear system of PDEs, a one-to-one -one mapping. But for and and what one can systematically through this find the Hopf Cole transformation that maps any solution of the heat equation into a solution of Berger's equation. That's, that's what comes around. See the U actually satisfies Berger's equation here. Later on I'll discuss with you how could we have found this system itself. That's that, that, that's, that's the interesting question. That's the extension to non-invertible mapping. Because this is strictly speaking a non-invertible mapping. And how can we find that direct, more directly? And it's, well, how does this system here arise? Okay, so now we want to talk about how to find the conservation laws for any given PDE system. So now if you go and study Neuter's theorem, what you find is that it's a multiplier theorem. And in fact, all you can show that all conservation laws arise from multipliers. So, so now the question is, um, mu of x, this particular, an expression depending on u of u and first partials and up to n minus one order partial is a multiplier for a local conservation law of this particular equation, if and only if, and this is very, very important, for arbitrary u of x and t. That is, the u does not solve the equation. That's very important. You have that the, the Euler operator operating on the uh, multiplying mu by the, by the h of the equation is identically zero for arbitrary u. 
Now, the, what's behind this? Well, the ex, the Euler operator, what, what one can show is what characterizes the Euler operator. It's like the curl operator. The curl operator wipes out gradients, and if something is uh, uh, wiped out by the curl operator, it must be a gradient. And the divergence operator wipes out curls, and if something is ripped, wiped out by the divergence, it must be a curl. Well, the Euler operator is something that wipes out divergences. And, it's, and if something is wiped out by an Euler operator, it must be a divergence. One can show that. So that gives you the whole story, really. So in terms of the, plus the fact that, that, that conservation laws arise from multipliers. So in terms of the Euler operator, we, this is the Euler operator, the same op, Euler-Lagrange operator that you talk about in, in, uh, in uh, Lagrangian mechanics. Okay. So, uh, so now, so you, so you set up a bunch of determining equations that mu satisfies, because this must hold for arbitrary u. So u is separate from all the partial derivatives here are separate independent quantities, because it's arbitrary u. Okay, there's no substitutions going on. So you get a set, you get a set of linear equations that mu satisfies. Moreover, in our papers, the work was done with Stephen Anko, with several papers, uh, the first one appearing in the physical review letters. Uh, moreover, one has an explicit expression for the conservation law. And, and hence, one can systematically find all local conservation laws in principle uh, for a given In the, if you have more dependent variables, you have an Euler operator, by the way, associated with each of the dependent variables. So a multiplier mu for a conservation law of a PDE must be a local, what one can show is that the multiplier must be a symmetry. Now, now we're gonna relate multipliers and symmetries. It must be a local symmetry of H if and only if one can show the PDE has a variational principle. Um, Note that U is a symmetry, this is very important, that U is a symmetry of H if and only if mu satisfies its linearized system or the fresh A derivative. Okay, but that's not good enough. More generally, a multiplier for a conservation law, this is when it's, so now we have, must be a local symmetry if and only if it has a variational principle. And what does that mean? It, it means that the system that the, that the linearized system is self-adjoint. That's what it means, but I won't, uh, that, I'm jumping the gun a bit here. But as more generally, a multiplier for a conservation law must correspond to a solution of the adjoint system of, of its linearized system. And of course, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if the linearized system has a variational principle, then it must be self-adjoint, okay? So, 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 that, so, so this is general. In the case of, of, of when um, mu, uh, when the equation is, uh, the Lewis system is self-adjoint, that means it has a variational principle. Okay, so therefore mu must solve this, this equation. Um, so, the, but the converse is false, but this, but this, the order operator applying gives up all the information. A subset of the equate of the, of the order operator applied, it leads to uh, this, uh, uh, adjoint system. So the, so the additional equations are ones that guarantee that you do get a conservation law. So this is only a, sub, a subset of the determining equations comes from this. Okay. Now, now I want to look at the systematic extension of similarity methods to non-locally related systems through admitted conservation laws. So when I say that, uh, I'm looking at, um, at the at corresponding to a given PDE to correspond a, a related system is one in which every solution of the related system is a solution of the given system, and every solution of the given system is a solution of the related system. But it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between the solutions. Okay, but that does, mean, that does mean that a symmetry of one is a symmetry of the other and vice versa. So the critical thing here is given any, given any local conservation law of a system, one can form an equivalent augmentic potential system. A potential is, is arrived by associated with the conservation law. So here is the, 
what one can do is from the conservation law, we, 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 we get a potential variable V so that dv dt is A and dv dx is minus B. If, now look look at the system. If you if a, if you if a UV, so we're, we're we're appending a potential variable. If this solves this potential system, then by the integrability conditions, U solves H equals zero because VTX is VXT as that conservation law. And conversely, if U solves H equals zero, the original PDE then there exists a solution UV of the potential system, as I say, due to the integrability conditions being satisfied from the conservation law. But the relationship is non-local. Since for any U solving H equals zero, if UV solves the potential system, so does UV plus C for any constant C. So a symmetry of H equals zero yields a symmetry of the potential system, but conversely, a symmetry of the potential system yields a symmetry of H equals zero because all solutions are contained in each one. So it's always involving a mapping of solutions to other solutions. So hence potential systems for a given PDE system can lead to the calculation of further symmetries, uh, which we, would be non-local symmetries, further conservation laws, non-local conservation laws, Further possibilities of linearization that are non but are not invertible mappings. The Hopf Cole transformation is such an example of a non invertible mapping. Um, and solutions obtained by the non classical method that we apply the non classical method to the non locally related system. And by the way, this is also true for subsystems of potential systems as well as potential systems of potential systems. Now, for example, for the planar gas dynamics equation through such a, I'll call it a tree of potential systems, one can relate directly the Eulerian and Lagrangian formulations. The Eulerian formulation is when you are taking a snapshot of the flow and the Lagrangian formulation is, is when you're on going with the flow. Now through the potential procedure for certain constitutive relations, one can find further symmetries and further conservation laws for its Eulerian formulation through its Lagrangian formulation. And, and because of this systematic procedure and algorithmic even through other non-local formulations, which are neither Eulerian nor Lagrangian. So from a mathematical point of view, but, they get, but of course you have a nice physical interpretation for the Eulerian and Lagrangian ones, but the other ones are just mathematical ones. But, you, but we do have other formulations would yield non-local symmetries for both the Lagrangian and the Eulerian formulation. Conversely, for certain constitutive relations, one can find further systematic symmetry, further symmetries and further constantly, but as I mentioned before, I'm repeating myself here. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the, at the planar gas dynamics equations. The Euler system is given by the, uh, the, the, the this equation of motion for the for the for the for the gas, where rho is the density, v is the velocity, p is the pressure, x is the uh, spatial variable x, and the t is the time variable. And then we for the for a given gas we have a constitutive function, which can be expressed in terms of what we call the entropy density. And so here is the constitutive function for the gas. Okay. Now, in, in the, it often is useful uh, as a, in the Lagrangian formulation to describe it in a direct manner. It's, it's, it's convenient to use uh, as, as variables, as the independent variables, the time and mass. And, and here the partial time derivative is called, is called the material derivative. And here are the equations for the Lagrange system, the equivalent Lagrange system. It's not one to one to the order system. It's not a, it's not a point transformation will take one into the other, definitely. And so the Lagrange system, which I call L, I'm gonna call a bold E the Euler system and a bold L the Lagrangian system. Here's the Lagrangian system in terms of P, Q, and V. And um, okay, now let me see Q and V. Okay, now um, let the Euler system 
play the let's let the Euler system play the role of the given system. I'm going to show how we can use the methods I've been discussing, the potential approach, to get directly the Lagrangian system. Okay, let the Euler system play the role of the given system. Since the first equation, let's go back here. The, 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 the continuity equation, conservation of mass equation, is, is a conservation law itself. And uh, from that, uh, we can introduce a potential variable r, rx minus rho, r is playing the role that I used to call the v, rx equals the density and rt is minus the uh, density times velocity. So we get a system g. So this is the potential system and it's not one to one. The relationship is not one to one to the Euler, Euler equation. Now let's consider a point transformation involving an, ink, an exchange of the roles of the variables with R, that is that potential variable R, becoming now an, uh, an independent variable and uh, T, which I'll call S as an, as an independent variable and X, V, P and rho are dependent variables now. So the spatial variable becomes a dependent variable and the potential uh, variable R now becomes an independent variable. And with less of generality, you can say the density is not zero. And we let Q, that's equal one upon rho. Then this, this, this potential system G, which is, uh, which is non-locally related to the Eulerian system is locally equivalent to the resulting one-to-one -one system G naught. So this is an invertibly related to G equals zero because all we're doing is making a point transformation. Now, a subsystem of G obtained by excluding X through the integrability conditions expressed through here is its non-locally related Lagrange system right here. So that subsystem is in fact exactly the Lagrange system, okay? So here we're going from a conservation law, we are using the, the potential system, this a potential system basically relates to Lagrange and Euler systems. Okay, now the, the Euler-Lagrange systems of the, of the planar gas dynamic are connected through a tree of potential systems and subsystems. Now the, in general, and we're talking about an arbitrary constitutive function here. Now the Euler system, with factors mu1, mu2, mu3. In other words, we, we, the, the multipliers are v for the velocity, but arbitrary function when using the Euler operator method to find the conservation laws, uh, one and zero yields a conservation law over here, which can replace the third PDE of, of, of the g equals zero through a potential variable w now to obtain the uh, a potential system of a potential system. So here's a, this is a potential system. And now we have two potential variables, W and R. And through the third equation over here, this is a conservation law itself, we can get another one. We can get a, a, a third potential variable Z for the gas dynamics equations. And this holds for any constitutive function. Now, non-locally related subsystems arise for both the W and Z system through elimination of R, and moreover, the Lagrange system itself has a non-locally related subsystem indicated here. So this gives it the tree, a tree of non-locally related PDE systems for the Euler and Lagrange systems of planar gas dynamics. So we go from the Euler, remember, to the G, and then get a subsystem of that that gives a Lagrange system, and there's a subsystem of a Lagrange system. And we get the W, an extra potential variable, Z, another potential variable, then we get a, another what a, uh, a subsystem here, another subsystem here. So lots of stuff here for arbitrary, and, and work is not, a lot of work has not been done on these systems, by the way, for calculational purposes, incidentally. Okay, now let's take a look at this. So, uh, for a Chaplygin gas, where the uh, constituent function is minus P over Q, the subsystem of the Lagrangian system admits the point symmetry indicated here, you work out the, the calculations, which yields a non-local symmetry for both the Euler system E and the Lagrange system L, and further extended trees for, for uh, rise for specific constituent functions. This is shown in one of our papers. A very fundamental role was played by a, a paper by uh, Ibragimov, Akatov, and Gazizov, where they had uh, uh, 
some ad hoc methods of, of, of getting non-local systems. Okay, a very good paper written many years ago. A system, I want, now I want to talk about the systematic extension of similarity methods to non-locally related systems through admitted point symmetries. So this work from the published sense started in 2013. And it came about from the observation over here, right here. Let's take a look at this potential system that we obtained from a conservation law. What is the critic, what is the most important thing about it? Well, it's really the fact that it's invariant under translation in V. And this led to a lot of thought about what does that mean? Well, what it really means, if you think about it carefully, is that if, a, if you have a point symmetry, a point symmetry of a PDE system, but a point symmetry could lead to a non-locally related system. Now that seems a bit odd to you, but let me just show it to you now. I will show it to you. First I'll show by an example, and then we'll talk about it in general. Um, so this work was done together with uh, Zhendeng Yang from China, Yudbazi, some of the work in Turkey, and De La Rosa, Buzon, and Gandarius from, particularly De La Rosa, from Spain. Um, so it's a very international group here involving different aspects of this. Um, independently from these two and then this group together. So, uh, so what, we, what we can show is any, any, first of all, any point symmetry of a given PDE system will show it, it, it systematically leads, yields an equivalent non-locally related PDE system. Let's take a look at the nonlinear reaction diffusion equation. Now, for any nonlinear reaction term, this PDE has no local conservation laws. Hence, the, con the conservation law-based method directly yields no non-locally related systems for this PDE. But notice that this PDE for any reaction term is invariant under translations in X and T. So let's first consider the invariance under translations in X as an example. So what we're gonna do is interchange the variables X and U. The most important thing is we're letting X be a dependent variable and U, which is an invariant, uh, important thing, it's an invariant under the translations in X. And hence, if we do that transformation, this PDE becomes the invertibly equivalent PDE. We go through the calculations and it's an, of course, we, it's, it's a horrible looking PDE, but it's, it, it is, uh, nonetheless, it's invertibly equivalent to that nonlinear reaction diffusion equation. Now, accordingly, we will do the standard way when you form a system uh, for a given PDE is you introduce dependent variables, auxiliary dependent variables, V, which is X sub U, and W, which is X sub T, and you get, you get the, what I call an intermediate PDE system um, for, for, uh, for five, an intermediate system. The critical thing is that the dependent variable is the equation is invariant under translation of the dependent variable. Remember that arose, arose for the potential system that I mentioned is invariant under the translation of that potential variable V. Okay, so we consider the intermediate system letting V equals X sub U, W equals X sub T and, and express everything in terms of, of these quantities. Now we have a system with two dependent variables, but by, by construction though, the intermediate system, by the way, is locally related to the given scalar PDE. Okay, but now what we're gonna do is consider the subsystem, and I'll, and I'll use the word inverse potential system of the intermediate system, obtained by excluding X to the integrability conditions, X U T is X T U, and that is, Vt is W sub U, and W equals this expression. But notice this, this is the most critical thing here. The intermediate system, and hence the given PDE4, is non-located to the inverse potential system because we got that intermediate system from a conservation law that Vt is WU. 
Okay, so I'll repeat here. This follows from the intermediate system, meaning the potential system of the system, with the potential variable x arising from the first equation in the inverse uh, potential system seven. There, there's a there's x. X sub u is v. X sub t is w. So, but excluding w from the inverse potential system yields the scalar PDE indicated over here, which is clearly non-locally related to the given PDE. So here's a scalar equation, non-locally related to the given PDE. But so hence through the example of the nonlinear reaction diffusion equation, one essentially sees that any point symmetry of a given PDE system naturally and systematically yields a non-locally related system. But now I'll give you the proof. Let's look at the general situation. Consider a PDE system now. Uh, by the way, the number of independent variables doesn't matter here. Uh, un unlike the situation, by the way, for the conservation law method, incidentally. Okay, so let's consider a PDE system uh, of n PDEs with independent variables x and t, and in the example here, and the dependent, m dependent variables, u one up to u m. Now let's suppose the PDE system admits this point symmetry, it admits the point symmetry. We're using the Einstein convention here in, in uh, the sum i equals uh, one to m here. Now let x capital X t u one up to u m be corresponding canonical coordinates so that the point symmetry x transforms to, to, uh, invariant, to translation in u1. For every point symmetry, we can find the canonical coordinate. So I'm looking at the canonical coordinate that is translated. That is PDE system A transformed invertibly to a PDE system invariant under translations in u1, and R transforms to R hats, R uh, sigma, sigma, to the n PDEs uh, with now Look, and I call u hat u the components u2 up to um, and u is u1 up to um. And this equation you see is invariant under, as it's, as this system is invariant under translations in u1. So now we do what we did for the um, uh, reaction diffusion equation. We consider the intermediate system by picking the standard way of, of getting a system from a PDE system, and that's to use take the first partials u. Uh, one t beta is u one x. You have a, if you by the way, if you had a um, uh, uh, more than uh, two independent variables, this would be the gradient. So alpha is u one t, beta is u one x, and here we have the the equations, and and where the r squiggle sigma is obtained from the other one after appropriate substitutions, and this. By construction, this intermediate system is locally equivalent to the given PDE system, eight. But now, let's exclude the dependent variable U1 from the intermediate system, nine, and this yields the equivalent inverse potential system with this conservation law in it. So the inverse potential system is non-locally related to the given PDE system since the intermediate system is a potential system for the inverse potential system. Okay, so the, consequently, the following theorem has been proved. Any point, sy point symmetry of the PDE system eight, by the way, sigma up here should be one, one up to M, and any point symmetry of, of PDE system eight uh, yields an equivalent non-locally related inverse potential system 10. Now, papers that appeared in 2020 and 2021, um, uh, what they have shown um, is that the symmetry-based method is, in fact, we really we should relabel it as a differential invariant-based method. The conservation law method is proven in one of these papers is a special case of the symmetry-based method, so it's more general. It's a special case. If you had uh, uh, invariants under endpoint symmetries. How many could we can get M distinct locally related systems provided, provided, or if I should say, if it's a solvable group? That's very interesting. We'll see in our paper. In other words, 
uh, suppose I have a point symmetry that yields a non-localized system. Now, if it's a solvable group, then the the then using the solvable chain properly, you then would have a point symmetry of that system, which can be used to get another non-localized system, etc. Um, so, in a 2020 paper, uh, two of these papers were written in, in 2021 and two in 2021. Um, uh, you, you will see you will see this in one of those papers. Um, this, this, the papers also show that the symmetry method is especially interesting for linear systems and variational systems. And that the symmetry-based method naturally extends to non-locally related PDE systems with three or more independent variables. And most important, and this has not been exploited yet, there's a lot of work to be done here, is that we can find explicitly non-locally related ODE systems for a given ODE system so systematically. So that every point symmetry, this is a, seems like a paradox at first here, but every point symmetry of an ODE system uh, will yield a non-locally related ODE system, which in turn can be used to reduce further order reductions for ODEs. Okay. Um, now I'm going to continue on now with the literature on it. So here are the various books uh, on, on the symmetries and differential equations. Um, so we have written four of these. The, the first four, these books, by the way, if you, if you, if you are able to, to access literature from uh, books from China, all of these books have been reprinted in China. And one of them, if you, if you, read, Mandar if you read simplified Chinese, one of them is in, is in fact translated into Chinese as well. A very good book is Olver's Applications of Lie Groups to Differential Equations. And those with an engineering bent, uh, the engineer Cantwell, Brian Cantwell, has written a very nice book on the introduction to symmetry analysis in the Cambridge text. Um, on the non-classical method, uh, you, to, the introduction of the method was in my PhD thesis, and then this, then the method was presented in the Journal of Mathematical Mechanics in 1969. By the way, this paper was not popular; the only be, was not not uh, was not uh, cited on, hardly at all until 1989. And, and it's now in the mathematical literature of all mathematics papers written in 1969, this is one of the 20 most cited papers in the world of all mathematical literature. Okay, the, uh, the, then there's a, a very excellent paper which brought the uh, work to prominence, was the, the work of Levy and Winternitz in 1989 in, in this particular paper. Uh, then there's the uh, nice paper of, of Peter Clarks and Elizabeth Mansfield in 1994. The, the idea of non-classical ones appeared in a paper with Zhenya Yan in 2005. Um, if you want a very, uh, if you want to get a very interesting paper showing how beautiful the non-classical method is for a non, for nonlinear equations, the example of the nonlinear Companitz equation, will be a paper appearing in the Journal of Engineering Math, and it gives you lots of interesting, physically interesting solutions to the equation. Um, now. And a paper with Chao Lu, and, I, and the work is really Chao Lu's work, I'm a secondary author in, in this work, is this, this 2014 paper and a 2020 paper. And this is, this is a, you, you now have, an, you've calculated the uh, non-classical symmetries of the PDE. Question is, can you tell whether they yield new solutions without before calculating looking to calculate the solutions. And that's what this paper discusses. Now, in invertible mappings, the, the first paper was with, written with my Japanese PhD student, Skiyuki Kumei, and when nonlinear equations are equivalent to different, but, but the equivalent to linear differential equations. But the paper is much, is, the information is much better explained uh, and in a more, and in a comprehensive way as we tie up the mapping of nonlinear equations into linear equations and mapping linear equations with variable coefficients to linear equations with constant coefficients. We put them in the same mathematical framework in, in this 1990 paper. And then the, on the transformation of the fusion process of the Wiener process, I did this work back in 1980 and it, it answered a question 
uh, posed by Kolmogorov in his classical paper on the, on the backward equation, in which he asked the question, what's the most, what's the most general uh, PDE that can be mapped into the, into the heat equation, essentially, mapping a diffusion process into the Wiener process? And a, a, a partial answer had been given in some Russian papers, but we gave the complete answer in, in this paper using the ideas I presented. Um, okay. And then uh, a paper in 2008, uh, we, sh we show how you can get those invertible mappings of nonlinear PDEs to linear PDEs now through the admitted conservation laws themselves. You get the same results. And sometimes one way of approach, the conservation approach may be simpler to implement than the symmetry approach. So it's important to have two different points of view. Higher order symmetries, as I mentioned, they were implicitly mentioned in Neuther's work, but uh, Kume with, uh, wrote this paper, so the work is really due to Kume in, in his paper, and generalization to these higher order symmetries in the physical review letters in 1972, and a very good paper uh, on this is Peter Over's paper in 1977. It's a fantastic paper, this one. Then there's a classic paper by Emmy Neuter, which has been translated uh, in 1918. Um, and, uh, and then our paper on the, the direct construction method for obtaining conservation laws was published in Physical Review Letters in 1997. Of course, these papers can only be four pages long at most. Uh, so then with details of it, we came out in 2002, uh, direct construction method, uh, first of all, the first paper is an examples, and the second paper is the general treatment, two papers in the European Journal of Applied Mathematics. And uh, we're very proud that in the history of that journal, these are the two most cited papers in the, in the history of that particular journal. Uh, and there's a book paper by Wolf comparing different approaches. Uh, then we, uh, a very interesting thing is we had, wrote a paper in which you show how new con if you apply a symmetry action on the known conservation laws, you could obtain further conservation laws. And that's discussed in the paper over here. Now, non-local extensions. Um, so the first time it really came into focus was an invariance properties of the wave equation, but we didn't introduce any kind of language there. And I once attended a, a, a uh, conference organized by Anderson and Olver, and uh, it, we had a very interesting discussion of that particular conference, in which it was said, how can we find non-local symmetries systematically? So I said it was in the 1987 paper, but people didn't understand it. So that led me to us to rewrite this paper in 1988 on new classes of symmetries for partial differential equations to bring it out much more carefully. Um, and then we have the paper with Kume uh, for linearizations by non-local symmetries. Um, and, um, and in 1996, with, with uh, uh, the Ukrainian mathematician Vladimir Stalin, um, we, did new, we showed new, uh, new classes of Schrodinger equations equivalent to the free particle equation through non-local transformations. And the same ideas were applied to the Kolmogorov equation. So, the earlier paper was invertible transformations of the Kolmogorov equation into the backward heat equation, but now we have non-local transformations. And this is another paper, earlier paper on factors to discover potential systems. It's, it's, it's much cruder in this paper in 1995 with the Australian uh, post, my Australian doctoral student, Patrick Duran Wu. And then here are some other papers with uh, ANCO on on non-local symmetries and non-local conservation laws of Maxwell's equation. And this was done in two independent variables. And later uh, with Dennis Tay, Ankle wrote a paper with Dennis Tay uh, in Acta Applicandi Mathematica, which extended it to three or more independent variables. Um, look, a paper now on telegraph equations, ideas applied to there, making different kinds of comparing. It's very interesting to compare symmetries and conservation laws for different nonlinear telegraph equations. Um, and there are some further papers that I mentioned here. Um, and a comprehensive paper on the nonlinear wave equation in 2007. 
No, the symmetry-based method with my student Zheng Zheng Yang uh, appeared in journal Mathematical Physics and, uh, and further details were also in his PhD thesis. And then we have the paper in, nine, in 2020, it's a symmetry-based method for constructing non-local from admitted multi-parameter groups, which was discussed in detail there, many examples. And the paper with, uh, with uh, Yuzbazi from, from Turkey and how symmetries yield non-invertible mappings of linear partial differential equations that could not be obtained from the conservation law-based method. Um, and, uh, and, and interesting comparisons. And then the, um, uh, there's also an interesting discussion of when the equations are linear and, 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 and are variable, uh, um, are, 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 vari are variational as discussed in these two papers. Okay, then the differential invariant based method for obtaining non-local related systems and non-local non -local theories. This is a much more updated way of looking at this and comprehensive, much more comprehensively, general theory and examples. Uh, and, and in the second paper in the same uh, issue, uh, the connections with the conservation law method. Okay, well, thank you very much for, for your patience and I'm very open to questions. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. So now the session is open for discussion, clarifications, and questions. Thank you very much, Professor Blumann, for a very beautiful uh, lecture on uh, symmetries. Yeah, I have the question. Uh, how do you obtain solutions, for example, for soliton equations? You have infinite number of symmetries, which are uh, equations which are solvable by inverse scattering transform method. Okay, so you... you, 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 the you, you inverse, yeah, the inverse, how, how to find the solutions you're saying? So you, yeah. you would... So you, you would have multi-soliton multi solutions, which you can obtain from inverse scattering transform method. So okay. Can one obtain through symmetry methods the solutions? Well, okay. So the uh, idea would be that you would string along uh, the generators. Okay. So you have different etas for the, the, for the different uh, the infinite number of symmetries. So you take uh, linear combinations of the symmetries. That's what is, is what would, would likely lead to. I, I've not done explicit calculations that way, but that's how you could get multi solutions, multi parameter solutions. Okay. Yes. From so, from because uh, because a, li a linear combination of generators uh, with arbit with constants in front, arbitrary constants in front, would then lead to further similarity similarity solutions. So so you mean to say that one can obtain multi soliton solutions uh, by taking linear combinations? I, of I'm, I'm not sure about that because I've not looked at that, but I, I I would suspect that one could. Yeah, but, but, it, but it might. Be, but 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 there's some very beautiful formulas that were developed for moving, obtaining multi-parameters, and they may not be so simply obtained by this method. I don't know the answer, but I can't answer that question for you. Yeah. So what is the? I mean, you have equations uh, which exhibits chaotic solution. I mean, chaos, like even simple uh, uh, nonlinear ordinary differential equation, like a Duffing oscillator. Yes. So to which I do not see any symmetries. So for these kind of differential equations, do symmetries play any role? Um, the symmetries have to, you have to have a symmetry to, to use symmetries, okay? So there has to be a, a, a symmetry of the equation. Um, but it, does it ha doesn't, it, doesn't it have a translational symmetry though? No, the Duffing oscillator doesn't have a translation symmetry. Of the independent variable? Yes. It's not invariant. I, I don't remember now. It's not invariant in a translation in X. No, no, no. Okay, but then you can't use symmetry. If it has no symmetry, you can't use symmetry method. I can't. It's a long time ago. I looked at the Duffing oscillator. I thought it had, but anyhow. So, so that means the the use of symmetry methods is confined to a subclass of differential equations. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's for sure. But no, no. I, I should be careful when I say that. We're talking about symmetry in a direct way. But as I said before, in the beginning of the talk, was that every ODE has symmetries. The question is, you've got to find a, a paradigm or, or 
a, a, a system involving specific transformations where you could find the symmetries. So the non-local approaches are different ways. So one is, say, conservation laws. One is the um, a point symmetry itself can be used uh, to, to obtain. But there, you have to have some, uh, it does have symmetries, but the question is, are they, can you find them? That's the problem. And and moreover, can you use them? So we don't, we, we, don't, we only are at the beginning stages in a sense of the big picture. Yeah. Okay, so you, you have talked only about continuous symmetries. There are yes. equations which, uh, which possess interesting discrete symmetries. Yes. So have you explored the role of these discrete symmetries? Well, a little bit. Sometimes discrete symmetries can be found in special cases of continuous symmetries by extending the, the, the transformations. But I've not done explicit work that way, no. Because now we speak of uh, PT symmetric uh, uh, systems, linear, nonlinear systems, PT symmetric quantum mechanics. I, I didn't catch the word. What kind of symmetric? Uh, space what? time, uh, space reflection, time reflection. PT no, no. Symmetries. So the, the, they 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 do play a role. Uh, if you go back in the papers, we show how uh, uh, discrete symmetries can be used to map solutions into other solutions. That is discussed in uh, in so that, that map a conservation law into another conservation law. We discussed that. So you, discrete symmetries are useful. To move to map one conservation law into another conservation law, so that is so in our paper on the paper I mentioned. Let me go back and show it to you. Um, okay, new conservation law obtained directly from symmetry action. On this particular paper, the symmetry does not have to be a continuous symmetry. The symmetry uh, can be a discrete symmetry. We show many examples in this paper. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so any other questions from the audience? Uh, uh, Professor, I have a doubt. Uh, yeah, so there is a one more. Uh, yeah, Muthuraj, do you have some question? Yes, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, greetings, sir. Thank you for the nice lecture. You're welcome. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, we are working on the investigation of uh, nonlinear stability of the dynamical systems. Yes. Um, um, actually, we are trying to utilize the uh, form of symmetry analysis uh, for this uh, stability. Uh, so far, we haven't found any uh, method or um, any relation to uh, reach the stability point of view. Yes. Um, is there any uh, way or suggestions from you to reach the um, stability characteristics of the differential equation using symmetry? I'm not aware of that, no. Okay, sir. And also, um, uh, actually, you, we have, you might, uh, you might, as I say, you might try to, to mapping into another ODE, and that might be something useful there, when I mentioned it during the talk. Okay, sir. And also, on uh, another question. Um, also, it's also kind of help. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we are facing some trouble with uh, finding uh, Lee point symmetries for uh, yes. ordinary ODE equations. Yes. So, um, uh, what is the next step I have to do to solve that uh, equation? Is your, is your problem, is your problem uh, solving the determining equations? Is that your problem? Or is it setting up the determining equations? What is the problem? Actually, uh, yeah, we are trying some software to find out this um, uh, tangential vectors. Uh, for example, map, yeah, map, we are using Maple. Mm. Okay, um, um, you should be able to uh, you should be able to solve the determining equations for the symmetries. You should be able to. There is a a, a, a program due to uh, Shevyakov and is worked by by. Ian Anderson, there's, there's some some programs there, but I, but okay. in Maple they have they have the symmetry, and I think in in um, uh, what do you call the one from uh, uh, not not Maple, but there's another other programs for for, for calculating this, calculating symmetries. Yes, sir. There are several algorithms to uh, get the tangential vectors for the symmetries. So yes. uh, we, we tried actually, we uh, get, didn't get any uh, 
this kind of this uh, symmetries so uh oh, that mean that find, the system you, don't you have no, you, you, no no doesn't mean at all so you, you found no symmetries using the uh that we're trying to say you was you found no symmetries using software is that correct yes sir is that correct Okay, no, yes, no. Sir. So what you can do from my talk today is, you, is look for a non-locally related ODE and try it on that. Okay. Uh, okay. Sir. That although you could look for a a, a, a the conservation law idea uh, for it, uh, for example, or 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 you could that that will help you if you look for conservation laws, or you can uh, you, but you should have no symmetries at all. Yes, sir. It doesn't show any. No symmetries at all. You found. Yes, sir. Okay, but you could look for conservation laws. You could do that. I mean, that would be that's in that's a separate issue, and that gives you a reduction too, which would not be obtained by the point symmetry analysis, except for first order ODEs. Then they're the same. But if it's not a first order ODE, and you look for a conservation law that can, and you use the or you can use the direct method to find the conservation laws. And each conservation law can will will, will the reduction. So I would look for conservation laws. Okay, so actually it is a first order ODE only. Oh, first order ODE. Well, oh, but a first order ODE always has an infinite number of symmetries. Is it a single okay. first order ODE? Is it yes, a single sir. first order ODE? Oh, that has, has an infinite number of symmetries. That's that. That's your problem. The problem you're finding is you've got an infinite number, and so you're not able to find them. Okay, in, a, okay. in principle. So that means that it, in, in your case, to find specific ones, you have to use, uh, and, and it's discussed in our book, the book, the book with, uh, I'll show you the book that we discussed, which you're interested in. Um, in the book with, with uh, ANCO on symmetries and integration for differential equations, this book focuses on ordinary uh, differential equations. And it discusses uh, okay. how you can use uh, uh, specific, specific, uh, specific uh, ways of looking for specific for specific symmetry. We got so many of them. Okay, your problem is an infinite oh. number, an uncountable number of, of of symmetries. That's what your problem is. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other question? Are Clarifications. Um, Professor, I have a question. Um, uh, did, did you come across any work which uh, uh, which uh, describes to find the conservation law of Peyton-Levy equations? Which, which equations? Peyton-Levy Pain, type equations. I, I have not, I mean, I'm, I, I, to, to find conservation laws, you're saying? No, yes, I, yes. I, 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 there might have been, but I'm not, I'm not aware. It, it certainly oh, okay. could have happened. I don't, I don't know, the, I can, but I can't give you an answer on, on this okay. specific equation. Okay. Um, okay, so any other questions? Uh, uh, hello, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, sir. Uh, sir, I have doubt on like, uh, like, uh, uh, this question is related to something what uh, Lakhman sir also asked. Uh, like we have some kind of dissipative nonlinear differential equations. Yes. So there are some uh, dissipative nonlinear differential equations like a complex Zinberg Landau equation, uh, which mm -hmm. gives uh, some kind of dissipative soliton solutions. So is it yes. possible to find uh, such uh, a solution using some kind of similarity transformation? I mean, the theoretically it's possible. You have to do, you have to do the, the calculations have to be done. Uh, so you could look for uh, usually uh, this is this is an equation with two independent variables. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you. It's a scalar equation with two independent variables, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so you can do uh, you can look for higher order symmetries. Okay, first of all, okay, and uh, and secondly, you can also look. Uh, this is not, a, of course, it's not. It's not variational. This equations you have, it's not variational. You got you got dissipation, right? Yes, and dissipative. Yes. Yeah, so, so but you can look for conservation laws for it too. 
So both the concept, you can you look for conservation laws systematically and you can look for the higher order symmetries systematically. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And, and the way, way to do that is discussed in the papers I mentioned to you or in our books. Um, I should mention that many of these ideas have not been a, there, there are many PDEs or, or ODEs for that matter, to which these methods need to be looked at because they, they uh, many have not been looked at. Okay, so, so mainly I need to go through the higher order similarity and uh, some yeah, conjuration. Order, that, that's correct. It's very important, it's essential in your case to look for the multipliers depending on derivatives, and it's not a problem to do that, in fact, or, or looking at, uh, at higher order symmetries. I, I would focus on the multipliers for conservation laws myself. I would recommend that, looking at that first. Okay, sir. It's, easier, it's actually easier to find multipliers than it is to find symmetries, you see. Um, yes. Sir. Look at our work, you'll see that. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, we are not getting any questions. So I would like to conclude the session by thanking Professor Blumen for accepting our invitation and giving a very wonderful talk. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. you for accepting you're very welcome. Invitation. I wish all of you the best of success in whatever you're oh, doing in the future. You. Oh, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I will write to you the other details by email, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Goodbye.